G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy for today's video, which is going to be focused on the upcoming mid-season draft, which as I record this is in 11 days time. I thought today I would do a little bit of a preview, I guess, of what to potentially expect on the night. Unlike the actual draft, I feel like it's even harder to predict other than the, you know, the first handful of picks. It feels like as a concept, it's a little bit harder to forecast what's actually gonna happen because so many different clubs may have different strategies uh, when they look at the mid-season draft because it can mean different things to different clubs depending where they're at. So for those unaware, uh, a little overview of exactly what the mid-season draft is there for. It works exactly like the normal draft, uh, except it's predicated on adding players to your list for at least the rest of the season. So most players will be on potentially a six month contract in some instances prior to the draft players can nominate to have a longer contract should they get drafted so they can set their condition to being drafted as an 18 month contract last year if i'm not mistaken there was roughly i don't know close to 20 kids drafted and i think only about half a dozen of those had nominated for an 18 month contract the rest of them went for the obligatory six months and from memory one of the kids that wanted an 18 month contract didn't get picked up at all. So I suppose that's something you consider when you're a uh, potential draftee, is that if you do set your condition to an 18 month contract, then there's always a chance that a club doesn't want to invest in you as such because they're potentially stuck with you longer if you're no good. With a six month contract, they can obviously ditch you at the end of the season. So you have to balance that. So what's the difference between the mid season draft and the national draft? Well, the mid season draft is comprised of players who have previously missed out on AFL drafts. I don't think they necessarily need to have specifically nominated for drafts and missed out, but we're talking about kids who are at least turning 19 this year and older. So none of the kids that are going to be potentially in this season's national draft will be eligible. We're talking, you know, mature ages doing really well in their state leagues or potentially, you know, kids that were talented but missed out last year for a variety of reasons. There's a number of players, you know, who interviewed poorly and perhaps, you know, have matured over the last six months and come back strongly this year, or they were underdeveloped, you know, have had a growth spurt or something like that. They've kind of come on a little bit later. That's particularly true of some of the talls. Or, you know, they may have had their season ruined by injury last year and they've come back strongly. So it's an interesting way of adding talent to your list. Again, it all depends on, you know, what strategy is your club employing right now? So and naturally, like the actual draft, there's probably going to be a different approach from teams in the rebuilding phase or those teams, you know, trying to push for finals and improve their best 22 in the here and now. So I guess what I'm saying is teams that are pushing for finals and competing are likely to be looking at those 22 plus year old guys who can come in and impact the side straight away. Where those teams rebuilding, they're more likely to go for the undervalued young talent that missed out on last year that could potentially be make the grade in a couple Couple of years time. Another good function of the mid-season draft is if your backline, like Sydney for example, has been ravaged by injury, you could pick up the best state league uh, key defender. So it's an exciting time and there's definitely been you know a number of mature ages over the years who have gone on to excel in their AFL careers despite being missed out on in their original draft year. We've also seen one or two young guns come through the mid-season draft in the last three years. It's only three years old as a concept, uh, but someone like Jai Newcomb is the best example of a player who's come on and immediately become best 22 at his club. Is that going to happen this year? We don't know yet, obviously, but we do need to remember that the mid-season draft is quite a speculative way of adding particularly young talent. If you're getting a 25-year-old state league player, you kind of know what you're getting, but we have to remember that there's probably a little bit of a delusion of grandeur being, um, you know, pick one in the mid-season draft because when you compare it to the actual national draft in some instances, we're probably looking around kids that would likely go top 40. Nonetheless, it's still important. And given the giant Newcomb example and, you know, Tim Kelly, who was around before the mid-season draft, was a thing, there's always a potential you could add a genuine gun to your list. So for those who don't know, the, the rules around uh, taking a mid-season draft pick is that you've got to have a free spot on your list. So some clubs can go into a season with an extra spot on their list to hold space for taking a mid-season draft pick, looking at it in advance. I think Hawthorne uh, and four of the clubs um, that I can't recall off the top of my head deliberately left a spot open. And that makes sense. Hawthorne probably forecasted that they're going to be towards the bottom of the ladder and a potentially high pick in the mid-season draft is a valuable thing to hold. And that's not a shot at Hawthorne for taking. <laughs> it's genuinely a good piece of list management. But even if you didn't have a free spot open uh, throughout the year, if you have a player that is out for the season, you can put them on the inactive list and open up a spot for the mid-season draft. The risk that you run here is that if you put a player on the inactive list, they can't come off the inactive list throughout any point of the season unless you replace them with another long-term injury. So I'll give you an example close to my heart. Uh, West Coast have a number of players that are ruled out to about round 18, round 19. They could make the decision and say, you know, Jamie Cripps, you go on the inactive list, 
but they can't take him off that unless they put someone else on that later. So they couldn't play Jamie Cripps and they'd effectively been ruling him out for the last four games of the season. You can make the argument that's probably a smart decision, but I'm just giving you an example of what the rules are. So as I understand it, not every club will necessarily take a pick in this mid-season draft. You've got to have the lift spaces. I think about 15 clubs are expected to take picks at this current point in time. And there's a couple of teams, at least, I think Hawthorne and the Giants, who have potentially two list spots for them. Most clubs will take one pick, a couple might take two, and some won't take any at all. But anyway, let's talk about the actual draft prospects. And uh, I'm gonna give you an overview of the top handful of potentially the best talented ones, or the ones expected to go early. Frankly, there's so many prospects out there that I can't possibly give you a really good phantom draft over the uh, one and a half rounds we're likely to see. So I'm just gonna give you the top half a dozen plus prospects and perhaps throw out a couple of names that I think could potentially be picked up. So similar to Jai Cully last year, we do have one young player who is tipped to go as the number one pick uh, either to Hawthorne or West Coast. Naturally, it appears it's going to be one of those two teams. And it's a guy called Ryan Marich, who is a 193 centimeter third tall forward at this point in time. He's on the plus side, he's only 18 years old. So he's one of those examples of, similar to Cully actually, who didn't quite make the grade in his draft year, but has come back, certainly developed physically. And he's playing as an overager now. And I think he's averaging 19 disposals and nearly three goals a game from his games at that underage level. He did crack a gig for the Young Guns game and he was thrown all over the field. He did show some ability as a loose defender as well. So I think he's got some good ball use there and some good AFL attributes. Like I said, he is an overager playing against players that are, you know, six to 12 months younger than him. So there is that caveat. He's got a bit of a physical advantage in theory, but again, he's still only 18 years old and kids just develop at different rates. I understand he's been training with Hawthorne. That makes sense. It's a local club. They're likely to have pick one or two in this mid-season draft. So depending on who wins out of Hawthorne and West Coast uh, later today as this video comes out, he's likely to be a Hawk or an Eagle, you'd think. One of the other top prospects going into this mid-season draft is a guy called Luke Teal, who if you follow the draft, you may remember he was probably ranked around a top 40 prospect last year, but uh, injuries sort of stopped him from getting on the park. I think he only played four games for the Oakley Chargers and he missed out on getting drafted overall. But I think he's playing with Richmond's VFL side this year. He's put up some solid form and most recently he had 32 disposals for the Young Guns in that game as well. He's 190 centimeters, bit of a mid-sized defender that can play both on talls and smalls. And I think he's got some midfield utility as well, but I think primarily this guy is probably going to find his niche as a defender who can play on talls and smalls. Again, only 18 years old if I'm not mistaken. So still some development in him and potentially a pretty good AFL prospect. Then out of WA, you got a guy that uh, has caught some headlines, I guess, in recent weeks with the mid-season draft coming up. Uh, and that's Jack Buller from Claremont, who is 199 centimeters. He's a key forward and he rucks a little bit as well. And he's 22 years old. So he's the oldest prospect that I've mentioned so far. What you get with Buller is a ready-made ruck key forward who really made a name for himself when he had 14 marks and four goals against South Fremantle. But he's kicked nine goals in five games at league level this year. He's averaging about 15 disposals and seven marks a game. So you're getting a ready-made plug and play key forward. He's been linked to West Coast. You know, they kind of need talent all over the field, but I'm not completely convinced he goes there. I think there's a chance West Coast in particular look at some more longer term options where I think Buller may be a bit of a stopgap option, but it seems more likely than not, this guy's going to get drafted. Then you've got a genuine ruck prospect in Clay Tucker, who stands at 204 centimeters. And again, only 18 years old. He's playing again as an overrager uh, for Eastern Rangers, I think. He's been named in the best three times this year. So again, we've got a player who's probably slightly a little bit more developed than his peers at this particular level. But as a Ruckman, they tend to be late bloomers anyway. This guy's tall. He's 204 centimeters. He's probably going to grow to, I don't know, 204 to 207 at least potentially, which is a great height for an AFL Ruckman. And if he's showing uh, both athletic capability and some, you know, actual Ruck craft, which I, it sounds like he is, then potentially you've got a decent Ruck prospect there in Clay Tucker. Another player who was highly rated last year and missed out altogether was a guy called Kobe Ryan from South Australia. And at one point, this guy was actually being talked about as a potential top 10 prospect in the draft. I think it was fairly early in the year. It might've been about this time last year, but nonetheless, at one point, top 10 to top 15 was realistic for this kid and he missed out altogether. Now, there's some mixed theories as to why that was. I think he's a pretty inside dominant player. So 
Maybe they thought he was more of a state league midfielder than an actual AFL level midfielder. I'm not too sure. I've also kind of heard he didn't interview that well. But he's gone back to the Sandfall playing for West Adelaide and averaging 21 disposals, five tackles, and going at 84% efficiency as well, which is great. And most recently uh, had 28 disposals and 11 clearances in a game. So for a 19-year-old guy or 18 turning 19, I'm not too sure. Those are pretty solid numbers against uh, you know seasoned men. So we'll see what happens with Kobe Ryan, but another player expected to be drafted in the midseason draft. Then there's a couple of other guys that are speculative, but um, this one intrigues me quite a bit in particular, and it's Will Elliott, who is a 203 centimeter key forward, who again was considered a top 20 prospect at one point last year, but I think he had a season ending knee injury and missed out. And I think generally the story with Will Elliott is that he has had a real lack of exposure playing actual football, but he's kind of considered this uh, high potential, highly athletic kid. And at a height of 203 centimeters, that's a great height for a young key forward as well. And if he was once considered a potentially top 20 prospect, then this is the sort of guy I'd be interested in West Coast picking up. Obviously, there's risks with Will Elliott, who was actually the son of former test cricketer Matthew Elliott, in that he uh, had a season-ending injury last year and uh, just doesn't have the exposure. But to be honest, I think the mid-season draft is a great place to take some degree of risk. It may be with a second pick for a particular club, but either way, I like the look of this kid. Then there's a player from WA called Robert Hanson Jr., uh, who I think plays for Subi Akko, and he's 180 centimeter uh, sort of forward wingman who has cracked a league game this year. And if you look at this guy, he doesn't seem the most physically developed and ready to play Waffle Seniors, but he's put up some solid numbers. He's played five games in that league side. He's averaging about 10 touches a game and he's kicked three goals from five games. So the numbers don't really speak to, you know, pick me in the mid-season draft, but with his speed and his apparent foot skills, he's considered uh, potentially to have some AFL attributes. So the reason he's been thrown into the mix here is because it was reported that Freeman are looking at him. Don't know how true that is, but regardless, we know that he has had a medical prior to the mid-season draft, so he's a realistic chance of getting picked up. So those are just some names I've thrown at you in that I am intrigued to see where they get picked up in this mid-season draft. There's also Sam Nay Smith for a team needing a ruck in this upcoming mid-season draft. They may go with a 30-year-old former Sydney ruckman who's been dominating the VFL as I understand it. Once upon a time, I thought West Coast might be the most obvious team looking for a mid-season ruck prospect, but I've changed my tune on that a little bit. And uh, with the season being as shit as it is, we might as well get games into Williams and Jamison. So the reason I bring up the West Coast example is I thought they'd be the most clear candidate to pick up a mature ruck. I suppose Collingwood could as well given they're right at the top of the ladder and uh, if there's another injury to someone like a Darcy Cameron again then they might be exposed so I wouldn't be surprised if Naismith gets picked up then I brought up the Sydney example of needing a key defender and I think Essendon might be in the same boot boot I'm not Canadian and I think Essendon might be in the same boat as well and there's a couple of good prospects Oscar McDonald played 86 games uh, for the D's and then Carlton uh, has been showing some strong form in the VFL this year and he would make sense to join a Sydney or an Essendon and there's also Ethan Phillips another gun key defender in the VFL I think he was the VFL fullback of the year in the team last year and was uh, a bit of a surprise he didn't get picked up last year but for teams needing a key position defender he may be a worthy option then I won't rattle on too much more about all the different prospects available but there's a few former AFL players you may remember that are considered a chance to get picked up this year, starting with Quinton Narkel, who's been playing for, I think it's Essendon's VFL side. There's Boyd Woodcock, there's Marty Hall, and Riley Stoddart as well, who used to be on Sydney's list, all putting up strong numbers in their respective state leagues. So there you have it, guys. That is just a, a brief look at the mid-season draft. Like I said, it's not a whole lot of point digging into, you know, 40 potential prospects who could get picked up. Um, it's more fun to sort of look back in hindsight. But if you're a team with, you know, a pick in the top six to eight, there's a good chance you might get a decent prospect like some of the ones I've named in this video. But let me know in the comments uh, what you agree with, what you disagree with, what are your observations ahead of this mid-season draft and who are some players that you think you would like your team to draft. As always, guys, hope you're enjoying the content. I oh, yeah, intend to do a video on the actual national draft uh, before I go away on holiday, which I'll tell you about in another video. But stay tuned for draft content. Stay tuned for the regular AFL season programming, etc. And subscribe to the channel if you're new. And I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.